internal resistance and EMF. What the heck is all this about? This confuses a lot of people, but it's dead easy. So there is my circuit. Now what I'm gonna do is attach a voltmeter across here, and that is gonna be measuring what we call terminal PD. Now this is where people get confused. People think that they're actually measuring the energy or the voltage lost inside of the battery there. No, they're not, because you can't actually measure that directly. All we're doing is measuring what the PD is between here and here. So in other words, it's the PD of the circuit. It's the voltage of the circuit. Now, you can think about it in terms of voltage lost in the circuit. The voltage is a difference already, but we can think about it in those terms to make it a little bit easier. Now, let's say, that this battery set on it six volts. But what we measure here on our terminal PD is actually 5.8 volts. Oh dear, why are we not measuring the full six volts that the battery says that it has to offer? It's because some of that six volts is being lost in the battery before it even gets to the circuit to be used in the rest of the circuit, specifically in the load resistance here. So it's as simple as saying this, I'm gonna put this in inverted commas. Total V available is actually going to be equals to the, the voltage in the circuit or the voltage lost in the circuit plus the voltage lost in the battery. Now, those are some good terms to have in our mind if they help us understand what's going on, but in reality, this here is what we call EMF. That's the total energy supplied to each coulomb of charge by the battery. This is our terminal PD. That's our circuit voltage, plus our V across the battery. So the question is, is why on earth do we have voltage lost across the battery? It's because the battery has an internal resistance of its own. So we could instead model a battery like this, like a perfect battery, and then like it has its own little resistor inside of it as well. We'll give that the little R symbol. We still have our load resistance. We still have our ammeter there. So this is what we call our internal resistance. So the electrons, if they come around to here, they're given six volts worth of energy, but then they travel across the battery and by the time they've left the battery, they've already lost 0.2 volts of that six volts. So that means that there's only now 5.8 available for the rest of the circuit. So how can we describe this in an equation then? We give EMF the symbol epsilon, and we know that the terminal PD is gonna be equals to the current that we measure in the circuit, times the load resistance, that's the resistance of the circuit. We know that the current's gonna be the same all the way around, so it's gonna be the same for the battery as well, but it's not the load resistance, it's that little resistance there. Can you see? All this is saying is that total voltage available, most of it goes to the circuit, but some of it is lost in the battery due to internal resistance. We can factorize that. The problem is, is that we can't measure the voltage lost in the battery directly. So that means that we can't actually measure the EMF directly either. So what do we do? We measure our terminal PD at different currents. And what we find is this, that if we start with a big current, then that means that we have not that much voltage available for the rest of the circuit. If we reduce the current, that is increase our load resistance, then that means that the current gets less. So there's more voltage available for the circuit. Keep going back and back and back, and we end up with this line here. Now, if we extrapolate this line then, back to zero current, we can't measure that directly because of course we can't do anything in a circuit if there's no current flowing. But theoretically, that then is the maximum amount of voltage available from the battery. But we can never, ever, ever have that whole six volts available to the circuit 
because that's only possible when the current is zero. Incidentally, the gradient of this gives you minus the internal resistance. So we can find out the internal resistance experimentally by measuring the terminal PD at different currents. See, it's easy, isn't it? So I hope that helps. If you've got any questions, or if you feel I've missed anything out, then please put in a comment down below, and I'll see you next time.